Today, I'm going to show you how I took a simple idea for dynamic volume control and turned it into a powerful sound presence detection system for your Home Assistant voice satellites. Plus, I'll show you how I use it to create automations in Home Assistant. And if you're ready, let's go! But first, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. They are not just any PCB manufacturer. They are the one-stop online manufacturer with 24-7 customer service. PCBWay provides lining fast PCB fabrication and assembly, along with offerings in 3D printing and CNC machining. They provide the easiest way to make your projects come to life. And they recently added a new UV printing multicolor option that will allow you to print any image onto your PCBs. How cool is that? Whether you're a student tinkering in your garage or a seasoned engineer working on the next big thing, PCBWay has your back. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So first, let me tell you how this actually came to be. A month ago, I found the Dynamic Volume Package by JAAPP. And I liked the concept so much that I immediately added it to my ready-to-use firmware for the rear speaker light. The first thing that I noticed was that while the volume anchor setting goes from 0 to 1, the volume for the media player goes from 0 to 100. So at first, I thought about submitting a pull request to correct the scale, which would make it clearer for the users and simplify the setup process. But once I started analyzing and changing the code, I really couldn't stop myself and ended up changing the sensors used to measure the sound level. And this led me to change the algorithm to adjust the volume level of the media player. Again, the reason behind that was that it was difficult for me to understand what the percentage value meant for these sensors. So I ended up creating a decibel measurement sensor. And while it's not highly sensitive in very quiet environments, it's quite accurate for measuring moderate to loud sound levels, which is ideal for a use case. But at this point, I changed it too much the way that the original project worked. And normally, a pull request should only focus on one specific thing since every change needs to be reviewed by the developer of the project before merging it into the main code. Also, honestly, maybe from the perspective of the developer, the changes might not be even needed. The fact that it was difficult for me to explain how to set it up doesn't mean that there was something wrong with the project to begin with. I just decided to take a different approach based on what it was more familiar to me. So anyway, because of this, I decided to keep it a separate project. And if you know me, this just allowed me to open the door for more changes. So I added a smoothing algorithm so that the sound will slowly increase over time instead of just jumping when the sound level fluctuates. Due to the nature of sound, we will always have some spikes. But a single spike hardly represents the actual sound level of a room. And since this sensor updates every 5 seconds, a sudden sound spike could increase the volume right before an announcement is broadcasted, resulting in a blast of sound from your speaker. After that, while I was analyzing the data from the sound level sensor, I noticed that the waveform showed that the sound level had a direct correlation with me being present at the desk where my rear speaker light is. This made me think about what projects like Bermuda and ESP Present do using Bluetooth signal levels. So, I decided to create a sensor that can translate what these changes in waveform could mean, in an attempt to make this information more useful and simpler to use. This is how I came up with the sound detection sensor. It has 5 states. Silence for prolonged periods of very low ambient noise. Quieting for recent transition to low ambient noise. Active for normal ambient sound activity. Noise for sudden spikes in sound levels. And presence for sustained elevated sound levels indicating ongoing activity or presence. And since this will be affected by your specific environment, I made the threshold level for identifying presence configurable. So you can set the value that works best for you. You can even skip it altogether set it to 100 and use active as a present detection. While I found this a little too prone to false negatives, it might still work for your specific needs. We also have two configuration options for the dynamic volume feature. The first one is the dynamic minimum volume. This is the volume you want the media player from your assist satellite to be when there is no sound detected. The second one is dynamic volume level. This is how much you want the volume to be affected by the sound level. So the higher, the more aggressive the algorithm will increase the volume level. Oh, and I almost forgot, you'll also have a switch to turn the dynamic volume off if needed. So, now that the project includes a sound presence detection sensor in addition to the dynamic volume feature, I decided to rename it SoundSense to better reflect its features. To use it, if you have the rear speaker light, you can install the free firmware that I have available for the device that already includes this package. Fun fact, this video was supposed to go live a week ago, so if you updated to the latest version I released last week, you should already have it working on your system. If you have a voice PE, you can just add the package to your configuration YAML so that it can be added to your own build. You can copy the example or find the link to the documentation on my website. And now I'm going to show you how to use it in an automation. Since this is a special sensor due to the way that sound fluctuates, 
there are some considerations to create a useful and, most importantly, non-annoying automation. In that video, I mentioned that presence detection sensors like ESP Presence will become more valuable with this functionality. This is the ideal scenario to use the new sound presence sensor with your assist satellites. But this creates a new scenario. Imagine that you want to create multiple automations for different actions using the same sound presence detection sensor. If two automations use the conversation action on the same assist satellite, only the last one triggered will be executed. To address this, I created my assist conversation handler script. That allows you to queue multiple requests, allowing you to create multiple automations using the conversation action without having to worry about them possibly being triggered at the same time. With this script, requests will be queued and sent sequentially with a configurable delay between them. To get this script, you'll only need to unlock it for free on my website. To facilitate this, I recently completed a Google validation process that allows me to integrate YouTube information on my website. So now, if you're subscribed to my channel and log into my website with your Google account, you can directly access my free blueprints, automations, scripts, and more from the free section of my shop. This will also allow me to send you a notification every time an item you unlock gets updated. So you can always set up to date with the latest changes. And don't worry, I will only send you emails about updates of items you unlocked, unless you subscribe to my monthly newsletter that you can easily activate or deactivate from your profile page. Or if you follow a specific tutorial and it gets updated. There is also an option on every tutorial that allows you to request for a tutorial update. This will make it easier for you to let me know when a tutorial needs updating. I also added a change log section on every item from the shop. So every time that you get an update, you'll know exactly what has changed. After you unlock it, just copy it and then go to Home Assistant. Here, go to Settings, Automations and Scenes, click on Scripts, and here, click on Create a Script. Create new script. Now, click on the three dots, and click on Edit in Jamel. Here, just select everything, and then just paste it. Now, click on the three dots again, and click on Edit in Visual Editor. From here, what I advise you to do is change the defaults. For example, on a C satellite, you can scroll down and select default. Here, select your C satellite, so every time that you use the script, it will automatically use your defaults. So it will take you less time to set it up. Then just click on save. And then click on rename. And now let me show you how I use it on my automations. For example, on my assistant music conversation automation, I added the sound sensor as a trigger and I set the two to presence. And instead of using the conversation action directly, I just added the script and pretty much just copied and pasted the same instructions. But here there are two additional options. The first one is going to be an input boolean. If you've seen my automation videos before, you know that I like to use input booleans to store states, like in this case, to know if the assist satellite process is currently running. You can create one directly from the dropdown. You should use the same input boolean for each assist satellite on your smart home across automations. Then there is the cooldown. This is a set amount of time to wait before the last conversation was triggered to execute the next one. Now, to prevent this from becoming an annoying automation, we are going to use another input helper, this time to store the amount of time since the last time the automation was successfully triggered. This will allow us to put a hard cap on how often our assistant can ask us about a specific action. For this, I added an input boolean turn on action after the script. And I added an additional condition to only allow the automation to be executed if the input boolean is off. Now, with that set up, we need to create an automation that will turn off the input boolean after a set amount of time. For this, you can copy the example from my website. Here, just click on copy. Then, go back to Home Assistant. And here, just go to Settings, Automations, Create Automation, and Create a new automation. From here, if you're running the last version of Home Assistant, you can just paste it. Here, you just need to update the entities. 
Here select the input boolean for the automation. And you can adjust the time that you want to wait before allowing the automation to be triggered again. I set mine to 1 hour. Then scroll down and on the action, select the same input boolean. I added an additional trigger to turn it off if silence was detected for 10 straight minutes. For this, just update the sound detection entity here, or you can disable this if you want. Then just click on save. Give it a name and click rename. And while I was testing the automation, I noticed that although for the most part, this was everything that we needed, there were some special locations when the conversation action failed due to unknown AI reasons. And the assist conversation handler will simply stop execution without turning the input boolean off. So to tackle this scenario, we need to create an additional automation. This one is really simple. Again, you can copy it from my website. Here just click on copy and create a new automation. And here just paste it. Now here, as a trigger, we are going to select our assist satellite. And we are going to trigger it if the assist satellite goes idle for 2 minutes. Then scroll down. And here in condition, I added that this will only run if the input boolean is turned on. Then scroll down. And for the action, I just selected input boolean turn off. So, in the not so unlikely scenario where the AI fails to execute, the input boolean will be turned off, so that the assist conversation handler can keep on processing all the requests. And that's it! With this, you should be able to leverage the sound sense detection capabilities of your assistant voice satellites to create useful presence aware automations in Home Assistant. And if you want help with Home Assistant, you can book a one hour meeting with me so we can take a closer look at your smart home and help you achieve the seamless automation experience based on your needs, so you can make your smart home actually help you achieve your goals. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. And if you can do that, don't worry, just remember to leave a comment on the video and share it with your friends. We truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next video, bye!